Good evening, folks. Um, you are all very welcome to a live stream on this Wednesday evening, um, August, uh, what is it? August the 3rd. Um, it's been a while since I've done a live stream, so looking forward to getting back into it. I will be answering your questions, offering you tips and advice on how to be a better driver, how to pass the driving test. So if you have any questions, get them in in the comment section and I will get round to all comments in the next hour, hour and a quarter or however long that I'm here for. I'm here for. I'll be starting with some kind of updates, news. Then I'll be talking a little bit about pass rates um, and they do vary from test centre to test centre and they, they are, they, they, they kind of vary from, from um, the time of the year and the test centres as well. So they're just a snapshot in time, the um, pass rates. So, but nonetheless, they are still interesting to look at. I'll also be talking a little bit about the NCT and the long waiting lists there. And I will be going through the driving test application process. Um, I'll be going through this report sheet as well that um, a learner sent me in a few weeks ago. Um, he failed, he failed reasonably reasonably well if that's the that's probably not the best way of saying it but um he wasn't really ready for the test by the looks of it there was a grade three there as you can see on gears um lots of grade twos spread over a kind of a wide area of marks and a couple of grade ones as well for good measure so i'll be going through all that i got some great feedback uh, from this client about his test so i'm going to be sharing that feedback with you so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes if similar situations arise in your lessons or in your test, more importantly. Um, yeah, so first of all, let's start with um, a few updates, um, news updates, whatever. There was an a couple of articles released recently in some of the Red Tops, uh, the Mirror, I think, and possibly the Irish Sun as well, um, where it listed some of the complaints that people made about their driving test. And one... Um, poor learner um, referenced a driving tester who shouted at her Jesus Christ woman your handbrake um, apparently he screamed this at her as the um, car was rolling back so clearly the driving tester was a little bit nervous um, he was a bit anxious there with the when the learner allegedly didn't use the handbrake or didn't use a footbrake whatever and the car was rolling back because driving testers they do they kind of take their lives into their hands a little bit too. They they they're not as uh, they don't have the dual controls all the time if it's not a driving school car. So there's always that little bit of uncertainty when you're a driving tester going out because you don't you're hoping that the person doing the test is going to be a good capable driver, but you 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 kind of don't really know. There's always that little bit of doubt in their mind as well. I'm sure. Um, another was intimidated by two testers in the car. Uh, sometimes not very often now, but on occasion. The driving tester will have a um, supervisor in the car, another driving examiner, um, otherwise known as an inspector. And this inspector is there to ensure that everything is done properly. And the inspector is more analysing the driving tester rather than you, but he is going to be looking at your driving as well. Now, it, it's not something that you need to worry about too much. It, it, it probably happens one one in 25 tests I'd imagine um, it's rare enough but it is as part of a quality comp control measure by the RSA it does happen from time to time uh, so don't be surprised if you have an inspector in the car um, a person sitting in the back as well the person complained that um, every time she looked back behind her on the reverse around the corner and the turnabout it was very intimidating because all you could see was the examiner looking back at her uh, and I know I understand that can be, you know, it can be a little bit, a little bit dodgy when you have someone else in the car. Yeah, it's bad enough with the tester. In fact, sometimes it's bad enough doing the lessons, but uh, it can be nerve wracking when you have an extra person in the car as well. Yeah, so I can certainly understand that. Um, what well, what else did some other people say? I'm just going to pick out a couple more. Um, another was another learner driver made a complaint to the RSA about being failed for driving too slow, and he said he lost five marks on going too slow on the straight which he disagreed with he thought he was being cautious but as i said in my most recent video you cannot um be too cautious on the test um or in driving in general because if you're driving too slow like if you're driving 30 or 35 in a 50 zone 
that's not really being careful. You're at you're at risk there of causing tailbacks and causing other drivers maybe to become frustrated. So um, I've dealt with all this in my most recent video on progress, but let's just say the tester wants you to drive in a normal and natural way to be confident and to be practical and realistic. So try and drive that way on your driving test and you'll be fine, okay? Um, another person got marked down for driving 52 or 53 in a 60 zone, even though it was spilling rain. And this is where there's another little bit of a gray area when it comes to rain. I can completely understand people wanting to drive a little bit slower in the rain, but you have to understand, modern cars with, with the ABS brakes and with you know good wipers, good ventilation, all that kind of stuff, Yes, do slow down a little bit and do uh, take um, take account of the weather conditions, but you don't want to be dropping um, 7, 10, 15 kilometers below the speed limit just because there's a drop of rain. I mean, this is Ireland after all. You have to be practical. You have to be realistic. So if you, if you do encounter like loads of puddles and you're worried that those puddles might be covering potholes, of course, slow down then and take the precautions necessary. But if, it's a, if you're fairly confident it's a good road, and there's a bit of surface water but not that much you kind of have to keep up the progress as well because as i said there's a fine line between driving too slow and um you know being accused of of um, being overly cautious i mean and just just being caught being cautious as I, as I said um another learner complained about the airbag um the, the examiner said the airbag has to be switched on otherwise he was reluctant to go out uh, i believe the um the test was was conducted in this case uh, but you just have to make sure that there's no warning lights on the dashboard and that everything is okay that your car is roadworthy because the last thing you want to do is turn up for a test and some dash light is on like the oil light or the or some service light because the tester then if he doesn't have confidence in the car he may not take you out and the test will be ended and the, your fee will be forfeited and you'll have to pay and apply again okay so make sure your car is roadworthy Another person complained of some race-based discrimination, that they were the victim of racial discrimination. Um, the tester apparently asked the learner driver, did you ever drive a car in your life before today, or did you ever take lessons in your life before? And apparently the tester was saying, Jesus Christ, about 30 times on the test. Uh, the poor tester must have been at his wit's end, because I, I personally have given lessons to people who have told me that they're able to drive and that they have a full license in the likes of India and all these kind of places. And then when they, when they get in the car with me and I bring them on a few routes, I'm actually using my dual controls because these people don't have a bloody clue how to drive the car. So I can completely empathize with the testers there. As I said to you at the start of the stream, sometimes they're taking their lives into their hands when they're going out with people because they just don't know what to expect. And uh, sometimes a driver turns up for a driving test completely and utterly unprepared and they may have not even driven a car in Ireland before and they just they might have even have had a, an international permit that they somehow got and uh yeah it's it's believe me it, it does happen um the RSA then said that overall they have a good quality control system and only about one percent of tests get complaints for the most part the RSA the, the driving testers are very friendly courteous and professional there's all going to be a few bad apples but for the most part it's a good system okay i'm going to move on to pass rates now that, so that was just a flavor of uh, some of the complaints you're always going to get complaints it's, it's perfectly normal perfectly natural not everybody is going to be pleased with the service and that was just a flavor of some of the complaints that came in over the last couple of months based on an article from the irish mirror and the irish sun uh, i'm going to get on to some just touch on some pass rates of some test centers in a minute but let's get on to some comments there first i don't want to get too backed up on these so let's see who was first in today folks laura lee conboy is it yeah have my test tomorrow so nervous in automatic though well that's good if you're in an automatic laura it's one less thing to worry about two less things you don't have to worry about the gears and the clutch so the very very best look to you one road at a time don't think of it as one big huge test just think of each road as little small little mini tests okay listen carefully concentrate on the road ahead of you and you'll have a great chance um in the automatic you should still use the handbrake on the hill at lights and if you're stopped over five or six seconds okay you should still use the handbrake it's not like if you don't use it when i say you're going to fail there's a bit of discretion involved some instructors might not be as um how do i say encouraging with the handbrake as i am but 
Um, as I always say in my videos, there's you know there's a bit of flexibility with something. It's not like it's black and white with the handbrake or other aspects of driving. Owen service now. I uh, currently learning to drive. When reversing into a parking space, I find it difficult looking out the back window as it's a bad view. Are you allowed to use the reversing camera also in the test? Yes, you are certainly allowed to use the reversing camera. There's nothing wrong with using and embracing your car's technology like parking sensors, reversing cameras, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I hope I'm stating the obvious here. Don't look at it all the time. You still have to look behind you. I know some cars might not have the best view behind you. Some back windows might be... Um, Kind of very slanted um whereas the more boxy cars like with a straight uh back window and they're coming straight down like vertical almost have a better view i know what you mean but the, the the trick is not to look in the one place too long i'd always say to learners the five point check okay five points so you got your left shoulder there then you'd be kind of glancing over getting whatever's on, on, on the left side passenger uh windows then your three mirrors that's four and then the other shoulder the, the right shoulder then is five and you have to kind of keep alternating between those uh, you can also add a sixth one in there that is the reversing camera if you have one but it's all about balance not looking in the one place too long okay um sarah devon hi then i sent you my failed test sheet thanks again for all the feedback you sent i did get back to you sarah i hope i do try and respond to all emails sometimes it takes me a few days I could be getting 100 to 120 emails a week, so I do try and respond. I hope I got back to you, Sarah. I think I did. I think I remember that name. Um, but you're very welcome anyway. I think you were saying I did, actually. Yeah, you're very welcome. I hope it helped you. And email me if you have any questions. Daintai at gmail.com is my email. Laura Lee Conboy again. Best of luck, sir. Yes, I let go that. Sarah Devon says thank you. Hoping for the best. We all are. Edward Hogan, when I was reversing around the corner, I was always told not to stop um, in front of a gate, but my tester got annoyed with me for not stopping straight away. I passed, but he was very annoyed. So you are you were always told not to stop in front of a gate. You, I'm presuming you mean a gate as in a driveway to a house or something like that. Um, yeah, like, I mean, generally you wouldn't uh, stop in front of a gate. You wouldn't stop in front of a driveway just out of courtesy for the owner. But on the other side, if the tester is instructing you to stop, um, you're better off stopping because you're probably not going to be staying there too long anyway. Uh, look, I know this, I know it's a great... I'd probably say the same, don't stop in front of a gate or don't block a driveway. Um, I would always say that to someone who's doing a reverse around the corner or just, just park on the left. Like I would say that, but look, if the tester is giving you directions, you just have to obey the tester. But yeah, look at... I know, it's a bit of a tricky one there, I know, I know. So ask Edward Ho Edward Hogan there, I'll come back to the rest of them now in a minute. So a couple of shout-outs, folks, and then I'm going to get to a couple of pass rates, or uh, test centre pass rates. Shout-out to the girl in Dundalk, Apple Green, who recognised me as the fellow who makes all the driving videos. So thank you very much for, the, for looking after me that day. Um, I hope you're well, I didn't get to talk to you for long. Shout out as well to the girl in Clayton Whites who claims she watched, that's Clayton Whites Hotel Wexford, who claims she watched every one of my videos. She must be sick of the sound of my voice by now and passed her test, so congrats to her. Some driving schools. If you're in Mallow, check out Dr. Bob's School of Motoring. Uh, a great man, a uh, great Facebook page. Check him out if you're down in Mallow. Uh, Philip Colum Kerwin up in North Dublin as well. Check him out. Google him for any lessons there. Two of my biggest supporters on social media. Rob McHugh as well, can't, can't not mention him, uh, he is in Kilkenny, uh, Road Sense is the Facebook page there, he puts up some really interesting posts and I can tell Rob is a fella who really cares about the job and is very passionate, so Rob McHugh, Road Sense if you're in Kilkenny, um, another big supporter, Amanda Hall in Dundalk, I think she covers Dundalk, um, uh, she definitely covers Dundalk, I'm not sure about any other parts of Loud, I'm but sure Dundalk is big enough, she's enough to work to do there, so Thanks for all the support, Amanda Hall, and best wishes to you. James Mooney up in Cavan. He covers Cavan, um, Dr uh, Drung, and Coot Hill. So shout out to James Mooney. Thanks for all the shares, James. Best wishes to you. And In Gear Driving School in Dublin. If you're looking for lessons in Dublin, some people ask me, do I do lessons in Dublin? I don't, folks. I have enough to be doing down in Wexford, to be honest with you. I don't cover Dublin. 
Um, I don't even cover all of Wexford. There's two centres in Wexford, Wexford and Gorey. I just focus on Wexford Town. Uh, anyway, I'm not doing that many lessons at the moment. Anyway, I'm more focusing on YouTube. But if you're in Dublin anyway, check out In Gear Driving School, ingear.ie. Paul Murphy is the main man there. And I hear he took on a new instructor today, a guy called Clary, who's covering the Blanchardstown area. So best of luck to him. Uh, and check out In Gear for driving lessons in Dublin. Pass rates. Um, with pass rates for test centres, the bigger towns, bigger towns and cities, like Dublin, for example, is going to have a lower pass rate. It's always been that way because the junctions are a bit bigger, more complex, uh, there's more traffic, uh, more impatient people. Um, but if you're going to a smaller town like uh, the likes of Clifton or Burr or um, what other small, what other small towns? Um, yeah, anyway, small towns will have a higher pass rate. Ennis is supposed to have a high enough pass rate as well, although that's a bigger town now. But... Um, that's generally the way it is. The smaller towns have a higher pass rate. So, um, Nina, for example, apparently has one of the lowest pass rates in Ireland at 39%. Mulhuddard in Dublin, no surprise there. I know there's two centres in Mulhuddard, um, but the one in the, I think it's the Carlton Hotel, um, has a pass rate of only 38%. So that is not very high. And the likes of Rahini in Dublin and Charlestown also have very, very uh, low pass rates and high failure rates. Two out of every three people in uh, the likes of the Dublin centres like Rahini, uh, Mulhuddard, Charlestown and even mentioned Nina as well, two out of three end up failing the test. Whereas two out of three would usually pass test in the likes of Burr in County Offaly and Clifton in County Galway. Two out of three would pass. Smaller towns... Um, you know, maybe not the same level of complex junctions that you'd have in Dublin. And um, in Wexford, then, it's kind of 50-50. It's kind of in between. It's not, Wexford is a large town, but it's not a, it's not a very large town. So it's kind of, it's always been, give or take, 50-50 in Wexford. Um, so that's that. Um, let's see then, what else have we got here? Um, I will be getting onto this report sheet very soon, folks. I'm going to just mention a bit about the NCT here now for doing your test. Um, so I'm going to mention the NCT, I'm going to hit a few comments there again, and then I'm going to get on to this driving test report sheet. Just briefly on, on screen there, if you want to support me by Revolut, uh, you can. I recently joined a Revolut Revolution, so links will be in the description. Uh, you can also support me by PayPal if you wish. If you are applying for your driving test, you have to do it uh, at myroadsafety.ie. That's the online portal. Everything is handled there. The RSA are not going to um, take calls over the phone. Um, if you do need an emergency test, there is a form you can fill out, like if you're a healthcare worker or something like that, and you really need a test in a hurry. There is an online form and a declaration that you can fill out, but you have to do everything through the My Road Safety uh, website um, portal. Okay. Um, okay, NCT. There is There has been reports of very, very long waiting lists for NCTs, and it's kind of like to do with... Um, the fact that it's very hard to recruit and maintain staff at the moment um, and train them up. Um, there's also a lot more older cars on the road at the moment as well because it's harder to get new cars. Uh, that means older cars are having to use the services of the NCT more regularly. So that's also causing backlogs. Um, in some places, there is a waiting list of up to five or six months, I've heard. For example, um, in Blarney, in County Cork, you could be waiting for December. In Yall in East Cork, you could be waiting in up to January for a um, NCT test date. And it's also very, very busy in the likes of Dundalk, Drogheda and Nace. You could be waiting up to five or six months in those places. But it's still worth checking out the website um, because sometimes emergency slots become available as people cancel or as people move their slots. So you may be able to avail of, a, of an emergency NCT by either ringing them or checking out the website. But it is, it is quite, the waiting list is quite long in some places. Now, not all places. For example, Waterford is actually not too bad. You could have an NCT in a couple of weeks there, I hear. Uh, but it, like everything, it fluctuates. It, it varies on depending on the town or city you're doing it in. Um, also, the slowdown in new car sales has certainly um, had an impact, as I said. And there's more older cars on the road. And that's having a, an impact too. Um, 
you may be able to avail of an extension. You might have a three or, or four month, sorry, extension on your NCT. You can check that out on the NCT website uh, to see if you are um, able to get an extension or if your, your car has an extension. If your NCT disc is out of date, um, but you have the extension, don't worry. The tester will type it into his tablet and check it out. Uh, I think he does it on the NCT website. And as long as you're in date and it says on the site that you have your uh, extension, there'll be no problem doing the test. But if you don't have an extension and your NCT disc is out of date, there will be no test. Okay, even if you have an NCT, even if you have an NCT booked for weeks and months in the future, you have to have a valid cert, uh, a valid sorry, not a cert, a valid disc in your windscreen. Um, in order for the test to proceed. Okay, um, apparently insurance cover will continue even if your NCT is out of date um, as a recognition of the fact that it's just hard to get staff and as there's waiting lists are very long. Um, what else we got there? There is a fine of up to €2,000 and up to five penalty points. That's at the extreme end, okay, if it comes to that. But um, the guards are going to be they're going to be flexible and they're going to be um, lenient with you if you have your NCT out of date, but if you have a test already booked and you could prove that you have an NCT that NCT test coming up, the guards will be flexible then and they'll take it into consideration and more than likely let, let you off. Okay, so just to be aware of that. Um, as regards the NCT this the NCT, if your car is between four and nine years old it has to be tested every two years and every year if it's 10 years or more it has to be tested every year if your car is 10 years or more so if you have a car that is 2018 that means you're going to be okay to do your driving test because for the driving test um the fourth year is free if you know what i mean so four years ago is 2018 so any cars that are due for an nct to this year you're not going to be asked to prove that you have an NCT disc because the year of the NCT is is considered okay but if you are driving a 2017 car you have to have an NCT disc for the test to go ahead okay um okay then so as i said uh you want to apply for your driving test do it on the myroadsafety.ie they're not taking phone calls um there is a driving test estimator tool as well um, I haven't really accessed that because you have to have a learner permit number and all that. But let me know in the comments if you have accessed that learner uh, driver driving test estimator tool. And let me know what you think of the RSA website as well. I, I think it's pretty good. It looks pretty nifty anyway. Um, you A lot of people are asking about retests. So if you, if you fail your test and then you reapply, you will be offered an invitation to do another test within four to six weeks, sometimes sooner. So they are trying to fast track retests. Okay, so let me know how you get on with that. Um, that's a great thing as well. It's I think it's working out pretty well for the most part. There's always going to be a couple of people falling through the cracks there, but um, if you have failed, they will they will automatically send you an invite for a retest within six weeks, give or take, once you reapply again. Okay, as I said, emergency tests are available. Online form and declaration has to be filled out there. Okay um the invitational queue it's like a it's like a queue you're in for 10 days um if you don't pick a date um within that 10 days you will then drop back to we'll call the we'll call the regular regular queue let's say um it's always worth checking every day as well because you might have on the first day of your invitation you might not have as many slots but on the second or third day you could have more slots opening up that might be a more suitable time for you okay so let me know how you found the application process I'd be interested to find out how you have found it, okay? Um, okay then, so let's get on to some comments again. And <coughs> then we'll go on. I'm going to get into this driving test report sheet here then where I have lots of in interesting uh, tips and feedback for you. So the last one was a Hogan, Ed Hogan, I think, wasn't it? So let's see, let's see. Where are we going? Good few comments here now. I don't want to these two backed up Ed, there you are, Edward now Guinness Guinness Bay or Guinness B do you have to put your automatic car into neutral every time you stop no you don't uh, again a bit of flexibility here it's not like it's a black and white um, situation here but as regards your automatic car you do not have to put it in neutral every time you stop in fact for the most part I don't even think I'd ever ask anyone to put it in neutral uh, on the test it, like if I was given a lesson I, if they were parking on the left I'd say handbrake first and then P for park 
if they're waiting in a queue, um, I'd be encouraging them to wait and drive. But if they were far back in the queue, I suppose I I maybe would go to go to neutral then. But for the most part, if you're in a if you're in an automatic car and you're doing your driving test, okay, sorry, you would use the handbrake if you're on a hill, because automatic cars are great. But for all their benefits, they do and they are inclined to roll back sometimes. Okay, I remember giving lessons to a girl in a little Nissan Micro automatic, and without fail, it would roll back about would say about 10 or 12 inches every time, especially on steep hills. Now, it wouldn't roll back very far, but it was almost like the car nearly had to roll back for the anti-rollback technology to kick in. So I would always say to her, listen, use your handbrake, have your right foot ready on the accelerator, a little bit of juice, and that'll kind of get what's known as a bite as such. It'll generate some power, it'll get a little bit of a bite, and then just let down the handbrake and you won't roll back then. So you should use the handbrake if you're on a hill, at lights, if you're stopped over four or five seconds, um, you, you, you should use park if you're parking on the left for the hill start, handbrake and park. Uh, but for the most part, just keep it in drive. It's like in, it's like in drive and keeping it in first gear. You, it means you're kind of ready to go. And when the light goes green, for example, or when the car in front moves, the fact that you're in drive means you have one less thing to do. Uh, the gear stick is already sorted. All you have to do is give it a tiny bit of juice to get a little bite, an automatic bite. Handbrake down then when you feel the bite and off you go. It helps you move off quicker, okay? Um, splinter Q Beats. I recently took my driving test and I was slowing down as there was a red light. Sounds good. The instructor told me to break the light. The instructor or the tester? Hang on, driving test. Okay, hang on. The instructor told me to break the light and I didn't, which later... And you didn't break the light, which later led to me failing my test as it was marked blue. Interesting. So, now you're talking about a test. because Some people misuse the words instructor. So, an instructor is like me, like a driving teacher. Someone who teaches the skills, instructs the skills. Whereas a tester is the person who is the examiner, okay? So, it's interesting that the driving tester, if that's what you're saying, told you to break the red light. Because usually the driving tester is not meant to interfere in the driving test. So I found that a little bit strange. Um, something doesn't add up there. Maybe if you're still there, you might clarify that further down. I'll try and get to all the comments. But uh, it sounds interesting, all right. Um, if it did happen, it sounds like you were pretty unlucky. Um, Harry T, what are the grade points in tests? And which are those points to take of, to take of those? I'm going to have to read that again. What are the grade points in tests? Uh, what are those points? I uh, I'm not really sure what this question is, but maybe you probably mean grade one, grade two, grade. So grade one is like a minor mark, and they don't count to the overall um, result. Let's say the grade ones, the grade twos do. They you can only get eight of those, but if you get too many grade twos in the one area, that could be a fail. But if you get nine or more grade twos, that's a fail. And if you get one or more grade three, like this fella here did. Um, that's a fail because a grade three is serious. Okay. Um, feel free to clarify further down, Harry, if you want to ask me anything else there. I, t I hope I answered your question. Can you explain the grading system working? I just did that there, Siobhan A. How the grade? So I was just saying there, Siobhan, like grade one is minor, grade two is more serious, and grade three is like really serious. A grade three is something that is dangerous or potentially dangerous. A grade two could be something like forgetting a blind spot, cutting a corner. A grade one could be like something minor, like like a small mistake, like just like uh, maybe forgetting the mirror might or something like that. And if you get too many grade twos, it's a problem. If you get one or more grade three, it's also a problem. Okay. Um, Laura Lee Conboy, how many grade ones and twos can you have before it's a fail? You see, the grade ones is interesting. The grade ones don't actually matter. Um, they don't actually count for the overall result. But then again, you do have to be careful with the grade ones because if you get too many grade ones, the next time the tester is, he's not going to be able to give you a grade one because he can only give you two. Like if you look at this report sheet here on, on the side here, folks, if you go down to near the end there, you'll see uh, speed and road conditions on the left. Okay, it's the fourth or fifth there, uh, fifth or sixth from the bottom there. Okay, speed, road conditions. There's two greens and then there's one blues. So I'm going to take from that that the part, let's say for example, the person was going at the wrong speed, 
probably too fast um, for the conditions, like maybe going too fast on a road with maybe loads of ramps or potholes or something like that. So the tester judged it as a minor uh, discrepancy on two occasions, okay? But when he, when he, if he, if he made a minor mistake um, a third time, there's no room to give him a grade one, so it has to evolve into a grade two, which is what could have happened here um, on this report sheet. So the grade ones don't matter overall, but the grade twos do. So if you get nine or more overall, as this person did, you will fail. If you get six or more under the one area, like for example, this person got um, three under signals, okay? Signals there, you got three grade twos. So if you were to get six or more under signals, but everything else was blank, you'd fail the test. And if you get four in a row as well, so you see their observation moving off, there's two. So if that was a four, that would be a fail. So basically, if you get too many grade twos, and if you get too many in the one area, it's bad news. Um, even one grade three is bad, very bad, because that's a serious mistake, and you'll fail there with, with, with even one grade three. Um, Alfroza Sultana Misty. Can you tell me when I should use the handbrake for an automatic car? Yes, I was just true that there about 10 minutes ago. Um, so you should use the handbrake on an automatic car when you're parking. Like, for example, when you pull in to do the reverse or the turnabout or the hill start, um, especially. You should use the handbrake if you're stopped in traffic and it's over four or five seconds. You should use the handbrake on the hill or anywhere that you're not sure, okay? You do not need to use the handbrake if you're on a slight downhill or if you're certain it's flat and you're only stopped for maybe one or two seconds, you don't need it then, okay? But in simple languages, you should use the handbrake um, on the automatic car in a very similar way that you would in the manual, okay? On the hills, if stopped longer than four or five seconds at traffic lights and anytime you're parking like for a maneuver or something like that. Remember, it there is a bit of a there is a bit of flexibility there. It's not like you have to use the handbrake in those situations, and if you don't, you'll fail. It's it's not it's not that black and white. There's there's a bit of discretion involved, and there's a bit of flexibility. So don't don't beat yourself up if you think you should have used the handbrake and you didn't. Okay, it's probably not as serious as you as you might think. Um, Dermot Doyle, any clue when us mere mortals can actually get to do the test? Well, Dermot, you can do the test once you have a valid learner permit, and it's over six months old. And you've applied through the right channels. I don't know what you mean. Is there something stopping you doing the test? Let me know if you've any other questions, Dermot. Uh, Splinter Q Beats. I recently took my driving test and I was slowing down as there was a red... Oh, hang on. I answered... I, that, this is a comment coming up again. And the instructor, the tester told you to um, to break the light. Yeah. Uh, again, I can't... I don't know. I can't comment on that. Um, but that that's the comment I've already dealt with. Um, it looks like it's coming up again. Um, strange. Anyway, it's a strange one. I I don't know. You have to, you'd have to give me more information on that. Dermot Cooney. Dermot Cooney. Hi then. Do you have any info on getting a bike license? No, not really. I've been driving a car for five years. Do I need to do another theory test? Uh, what's the process? No, you don't need to do another theory test if you've already done one theory test. So, if let's say for example four or five years five years ago. So let's say five years ago you did a theory test. So. If you've done, if you've already done a theory test, then already there's no need to do another one, okay? But you need to. Um, the best thing for you to do, Dermot, there is when you're talking about bikes. I don't have a whole lot of information on bikes. You're better off uh, googling a, a bike instructor, okay, and ask them the information. So I wouldn't be particularly well up on what the story is with bikes or trucks or buses, okay? Um, Alfonso Sultana Misty again. Do you have any videos in Fringle? Fringle? I think Finglish you mean. Um, test center, please pinpoint the link, please. No, unfortunately, I don't have any up in Dublin. I do hope to do more in different parts of the country when I get there. Um, but sorry, I don't have any in Dublin. I have a, few, I have a couple in, in, obviously, I have most of them are in Wexford. There's a couple down in Cork, a few in Kilkenny. Um, in Escorty. Um, I'm hoping to do some more down in Cork now because a lot of people down in Cork are asking questions about the, the Wilton roundabout and place that I, I know it well. I used to live in Cork, so I, I there's a roundabout there we used to call the Magic Roundabout. So it's basically called the Kinsale Road Roundabout. And I remember driving many times through the Jack Lynch Tunnel and the Link Road 
and the Wilton roundabout, all that area around Bishopstown and all that. So I do hope to get down to Cork soon um, and do a video on Wilton roundabout. But unfortunately, I don't have any in Dublin. I do hope to do some in Finglas at some point in the future. And the Walkinstown roundabout is a definite one I have on my list to do. Uh, sorry, hopefully soon. Mulder X. I was told if you do your test, to st <laughs> I wouldn't have to wait too long for a conspiracy theory. If you do your test at the start of the week, you have a better chance of passing as the instructors have a set amount. <laughs> oh my god. The instructors have a set amount of passes for the week. I won't even dignify that with a response. So, uh, I'm going to get on to the um, report sheet now, folks. Okay, I'm going to finish this yacht first. I got some really good feedback from this guy, okay? Unfortunately, he failed his test. But as I said, there's no such thing as failing. You either pass. You either succeed or you learn, okay? So he got one grade three, as you can see there. He got way too many grade twos, and he got a little bit of a collection of grade ones as well to boot. So he had a, you know, full enough sheet. Now, I'm going to get straight into why he failed, okay? The reason he got a grade three was because he stalled. He cut out on a right turn. Now, sometimes I've seen that marked on clutch, like, you know, you, if, if, you, if you stall, it's probably for not, it could be for not putting the clutch in, for example. But sometimes... It could be for gears. So he didn't go into a whole lot of detail, but I think he may have possibly taken off accidentally in second gear, for example, on a busy right turn, and that caused the car to struggle and then stall. And he may have, and he looks like he stalled in a busy spot on a right turn when there could have been oncoming cars, and the tester deemed that worthy of a grade three. Uh, whatever else happened before or after that, he was going to fail because of the grade three. So gears, he stalled on a busy right turn, okay? Unfortunate, maybe he was a bit of nerves, maybe he just mistimed his feet. Maybe he forgot to go to the first gear, but I think that's what happened anyway, okay? So I'm gonna go down through the feedback that he gave me now, okay? I have a few points there in my book. So the first thing, the grade three, which I just described. Now he said, um, position at the roundabout, okay? So we have a grade two mark there for position at the roundabout. Now, he said that he should have left the roundabout in the left lane, but he left the roundabout in more of a centre, right of centre, maybe even in the right lane. So I think I think he was taking the third exit to the right, so essentially going at 3 o'clock um, direction. Um, so he checked the mirrors, indicated right, everything okay on the approach. But when it came to exit the roundabout then, he exited in the right lane and or the right side and he should have been coming over more to the left side okay so that's always an important point there if you're exiting the roundabout you should always try and be more left of center if you can it is possible to exit in the right lane if there's a right lane on the roundabout and there's a right lane on the exit uh, lane of the roundabout that's possible then to exit in the right lane perfectly fine but in this case maybe there was only the one lane and he was too right of center on the exit on the third exit possibly the reverse he just said he got too close to the curb um, on the reverse he just lost the mark on competency there as you can see so that's where that's where that mark came in he said he was touching the curb kind of like um, kind of like scraping the curb um, but he didn't mount it and he didn't hit it very hard and it was only a grade two so it just goes to show folks even if you do clip the curb or, or, or scrape the curb or brush off the curb it doesn't have to be fatal you know like it's 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 not a grade three. It was only a grade two in this case. So even if you do make a mistake in the test and you think it's you know a big one, you know don't fear not. Just just keep going. Focus on the next on the next task, and you know you might pleasantly surprise at the end of the test. Next thing then, um, progress at lights. So apparently there was a flashing amber light. Um, at traffic lights. This is what the, the thing on screen is about. There was a flashing amber light. Now, it was a circular light that you see here, okay? And the amber light that you see there was flashing on and off, okay? The learner driver explained that he waited until it went green and then he proceeded. He didn't know that you could actually proceed when it was a flashing amber. And, yeah, well, newsflash, you do not have to wait for the green light, okay? You can go on the flashing amber light, the circular flashing amber light, as long as there's no pedestrians crossing or about to cross, okay? So that's something that could come up in the practical sense on the driving test. And it could be something that might come up as a theory question as well. 
what does the flashing light flashing amber light mean and uh, it means you can go as long as there's no pedestrian so it maybe look it probably didn't come up in the lessons um maybe he didn't go over the theory bit well enough and he fell down on this but it was only it was only a grade two wasn't it what we got some where is the report sheet here um so progress progress at traffic light. so if, if, he might have even got it on the grade one there you see there's a grade one there and there's a grade two i don't know i think it was i think it was the grade two okay um next then progress interesting one here it's about dual carriageways he was entering a dual carriageway i think this was down in this is down in wilton and cork actually he was entering a dual carriageway, which could have been the link road the south link road um so he was entering a dual carriageway at 50 kilometers so by the time he finished with the slip lane and he joined the main left lane of the dual carriageway he was only going 50 kilometers now folks that is way too slow to be entering a dual carriageway okay now there all there will always be exceptions like if there's a queue of traffic in front of you but if it's not busy and there's no queues in front of you you really shouldn't be you really should not be hitting a dual carriageway as low as 50. this is why i usually advise people to use the full length of the slip lane to allow yourself a chance to build up an appropriate speed a safe speed to join the left the left lane of the dual carriageway so the tester specifically said you should have been around around 75 or 80 kilometers when you're joining the dual carriageway uh not 50 it was too slow uh, i'm not sure why he was too slow maybe he was conscious of going too fast i don't know but when you're talking about a dual carriageway the speed limit is probably going to be up around i don't know 80 100 usually depends um so that's that one now I thought it would have been marked on progress there, but it seems that he might have been marked there on speed for road conditions. Maybe uh, I'm not sure, um, but it doesn't seem to fit with that. Normally, if you're marked on speed for road conditions, it usually means you're going too fast. Maybe the tester marked him on that, but usually it, it will be a progress issue there. I, I would imagine progress on the straight or something like that. Um, anyway, moving on. Progress at traffic lights. I see this a lot, actually. People who don't actually roll up into the middle of the lights. So the candidate here actually was aware of the rule of traffic lights. So, for example, if you're turning right at traffic lights, you wait for the green light, and when the full green on, a full green light is a circular green light. Okay, when the full green light comes on, you can then roll up into the middle of the box or the junction. Okay. And then wait for a safe gap and then go when it's safe but this candidate noticed that there was no white turning box there was no yellow box so he therefore held back and that's why he lost the mark on progress at traffic lights you do not have to wait or you do not have to have a yellow box or a white box to follow the rules at traffic lights if the center has no road markings you apply the same rule that is when the full green light comes on roll up into the middle give way to oncoming cars if there are any oncoming cars and then proceed then when it's safe okay uh, so just just to be aware of that he wasn't aware of that he didn't know about that um he didn't know you could roll up into the middle so look at you live and learn don't you position turning right then so this actually happened at the same time as the grade three mark where he he got a grade three mark for stalling on a busy right turn uh, i think as i said i think it's for taking off in second gear or something like that or maybe Maybe he tried to go to second gear, he ended up in fourth gear and the car struggled and stalled. I don't really know how he stalled, but he did. But position anyway, he said, the tester said that on this right turn, he was not in the proper position and he ended up kind of cutting across the other corner of the junction. So it was like he cut the corner of the other lane as he was turning. He probably turned right a bit too much. Uh, look, I just misjudged it and uh, got a mark on position there um in general the tester commented that he was a little bit slow moving off at lights now this is why i always say to people make sure you're used to getting your bite okay that is whether you're driving an automatic or you're driving a manual your bite is crucial that's going to help you move off quickly and move off efficiently okay a bite in case you don't know is when you're in first gear you get a little bit of acceleration you bring your clutch up about halfway or three quarters of the way up and you feel the car giving a little a little lift a little rise okay that little lift or a little rise when you reach that keep your feet steady handbrake down off you go bob's your father's brother now on an, on an automatic car you're in drive a little bit of juice and the car will find a bite easy and quickly then and then you just let the handbrake down if you if the handbrake's up and the car will go so by by being comfortable with your bite and this is why i would i would encourage people to use the handbrake 
I won't say I encourage people to use the handbrake a lot. Like I, to me, it just makes sense to use the handbrake when I say to use it, like on a hill, at traffic lights, at roadworks, on even surface. You know, because the the your back wheels could be in a pothole and you could easily roll back. Uh, I pro I get people to use the handbrake a lot, so you're used to it. And then when you become more qualified and you become more experienced, when you're a full licensed driver. You can, you know, you can follow your own path then and, you, and you, you'll have the experience and confidence to work it out for yourself. But it's good to be comfortable with the handbrake. It's good to be comfortable with the bite. And I'd also say, for the most part, wait in gear number one, okay? If you're at traffic lights, you're at a, a queue, wait in first gear. Unless you're really, really far back or unless you know you're going to be stopped a while, you should wait in neutral then because you give your, give your foot a rest like, you know, and, a little bit less wear in the clutch too so but for the most part wait in first gear okay don't mind all this nonsense about wearing out the clutch or burning the clutch and all that kind of stuff that's a that's a load of codswallop you don't have to worry about that modern cars don't have that issue uh you would damage the clutch if you're revving the you know if you're revving the lard out of it and you're you have your clutch up like and you you, you, you smell it burn then but if you just have your clutch pressed in like that's that's absolutely fine there's no issue there at all I confirmed that with numerous mechanics, no problem at all doing that, okay? So anyway, I was the tester just said he was a little bit slow moving off at lights. So as I said, be comfortable with the bite um, and be comfortable and confident moving off. If you're waiting in first gear, it's also going to help you move off quicker at lights and just in general too. Um, what else did the tester say? A couple more points. The tester said you were in the wrong gear on two occasions and this led to two grade twos. Now, I, he didn't say what gear. Maybe he was in too low a gear and the engine was getting too loud or he could have been in too high a gear and the engine was kind of struggling or maybe he took off in the wrong gear maybe he took a turn in third instead of second i don't know but he was in the wrong gear anyway it just sounds like just down to a bit of lack of experience okay um another thing this hester said he didn't indicate right to enter the dual carriageway yes yeah, so this is again down in 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 cork um i think coming onto the link road in cork there um whereby um you're meant to indicate right to join the dual carriageway okay and that way cars behind you then know know your intention so it's a way it's a way of highlighting your presence on the road but it's also a way of letting them know what your intentions are now he could have indicated and it might have just slipped off on him or he might have indicated too gently and it might have only went on three times or something but that's what the test said anyway the indicator was not working when he joined the dual carriageway and I've seen that sometimes, you know, you, you see that. I was, I was giving a young lad a lesson today, actually, and two or three occasions he indicated. And his, I remember one time is is the tips of his fingers just, just kind of slipped and he felt it in, he felt it go down like, but he, he kind of didn't give it a good, didn't give it a good press down. It was more of a, more of a slide off it. And the indicator went on three times, but then it kind of slipped off and he was, you know, he was without an indicator there this morning for, for a couple of seconds coming off around. So sometimes the indicators might just, accidentally go off earlier or you might think you've indicated but you haven't or the wheel might straighten or something like that so it all comes down to concentration um what else did the tester say here um grade two observation on roundabouts didn't do um didn't do the looks in time so typically what some people do is they wait until they get to the line and then start looking okay in reality if you're coming up to a roundabout this is very important okay if you're coming up to a roundabout, try and get the looks in early and often. You don't have to be going to giving big dramatic movements now and risking giving yourself some neck pain. You can start when, when you're about 40, 50 meters back from the roundabout, just start by moving the eyes, just like this. You don't have to move that, just move the eyes, just glance it like that. Give, give yourself an idea. Now, the closer you get to the roundabout, say when you're 30 meters from the roundabout, then start giving little looks like that. See that there? Just little small looks. And when you're practically at the line, well, then the looks can increase because of the angle of the roundabout. You'll need to move the head more then, okay? But look, to cut a long story short, the tester said he didn't do the looks in time. Uh, you have to preview the roundabout. So you have to look early and often. Many quick looks are best. Don't just get one look, okay? Same goes for junctions, like T-junctions. Um, so, oh yeah, on that, on that point, the tester also said that... Because the learner driver didn't do the preview looks, the preliminary looks, okay, the learner driver ended up stopping when there was absolutely no need to stop. And if you had been doing the looks properly, 
you would have seen that it was all safe to go and you could have carried on in second gear instead of stopping and going to first gear and losing a mark on progress at roundabouts there as you'll see just below halfway there one grade two on progress at roundabouts and this reminds me of uh, <clears throat> how you can easily link marks so for example here progress and observation are very easily linked because if you're not observing the traffic on your approach to the roundabout and you're not aware of the volume of traffic that's there or that isn't there then you may end up stopping when you don't need to stop and that just goes to show how observation is closely linked to progress and you can easily lose marks on both um, on occasion okay then um they were the main things that the tester said. They're going to run down through the sheet myself there now just to see if I've missed anything there now. Um, so go, look up, up the top there. So there's there's a grade one mark on rules and checks. This is more than likely to do with the theory and road science. A lot of people get, get kind of stressed about the theory and road science. It is only a small part of the test, but it is good. It's more of a, it, it kind of sets you up nicely if you, if you know your theory and road science. So try and have a good knowledge of your theory your driving instructor should be able to give you some kind of a sheet that has the, the most common questions and answers i've made loads of videos on it anyway um you can download the rsa rules of the road book um so anyway he must have got two questions wrong you can only get a one grade two mark that's the max you can get on rules and checks okay one grade two you can't lose any more than that that's what that was um position then around so we, we we i think we mentioned position around about i think he said he was out of position there um yeah didn't leave didn't leave the roundabout on the left on the left side he was taking the third exit right so he didn't leave it left enough um position turning right i think we touched on that i think he, he might have cut the corner or something like that a grade one as well there just a minor position turning right it could have been that he went a little bit too far up or he didn't or maybe he cut the corner a little bit as well on another occasion or sometimes <clears throat> It could be from going too far up and doing a bit of a, a bit of a swan neck like and having come almost coming back on yourself. Observation moving off. Yeah, I do see that a lot. This is why I uh, I invented the one two three rule a number of years ago. When you're moving off, okay, from a parked position, okay, you have to do the one two three. So one gear stick, go to first gear. Two indicators indicate to the right. Three mirrors and a blind spot. Check your three mirrors, blind spot. If it's safe then go but if you haven't moved off straight away you have to check the three mirrors and the blind spot again okay just to refresh them okay because a lot of things can happen in a few seconds and if you don't refresh your blind spot if, it, if, you're, if you're not able to move off straight away and you don't refresh it you could lose marks on observation moving off okay it's very very important and if you were listening to me earlier on you'll know that i always try and get people to use the handbrake and get people comfortable with the bite moving off so if you're comfortable moving off and you're confident getting a bite and you're able to move off quickly and efficiently, that means then you're able to move off quickly and efficiently after the blind spot. So there's less kind of messing around and waiting around and hence why I get people to use the handbrake and be comfortable with the bite. You can see how it all links together and it all falls into place like a jigsaw. Okay, So that's where observation moving off comes in. Now I want to say something, a very, 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 very important point folks. I want you to remember this, okay, because I can guarantee you there's people out there that are failing on this point, okay? If you're moving off, as in pulling out from the side of the road, after your reverse or after your turnabout, do not forget your one, two, three. Do not forget to check the blind spot. So many people, just after they finish the reverse around the corner, for example, now they're probably so focused on the reverse around the corner that they just go into first gear, maybe indicate if, if, if they're lucky, hopefully they do, and just drive straight out. Big mistake you have to make sure you get your three mirrors and blind spot when you're pulling off after your reverse and after your turnabout as well okay and sometimes you'll be asked to park before the corner most times sorry so you'll, you'll drive past the corner and then park on the left so you, in all those occasions you have to get your blind spot both when you when you move off and and park on the left for the reverse and before you move off on the reverse and after reverse so so important and another bonus tip as well if you stop on the reverse around the corner for whatever reason i mean you have to be looking out behind you the majority of the time so there could be pedestrians or cyclists or something so if you stop for whatever reason on the reverse around the corner do not just move off again make sure you give a full look around including your blind spot before you go again on the reverse around the corner okay don't just look in the mirrors and keep going okay you have to give a full look around before you go, you might you might have to stop for a car or a pedestrian or something, okay? 
Um, observation roundabouts. Yeah, I think we talked about that. I wasn't looking. Um, hazards. Well, look, at that could be anything. Like Hazards could be anything from going over a ramp too slow, going over a ramp too fast. Roadworks, parked cars, potholes, uh, someone opening a door quickly. Hard to know what it was. He didn't tell me what the hazard one was, but it was something anyway. It's on reaction there, so he didn't react something. Maybe he didn't slow down enough, uh, a bit of late break-in. Hard to know. It could have been anything like this. Just a lot of it comes down to experience. Um, clearance overtake and stationary vehicles. So it seemed that he got a little bit close to some stationary vehicles, which usually means parked cars. Look, you have to try your best here to move out early and gradually when it comes to parked cars. A lot of people have asked me, oh, Dane, do I need to indicate overtaking parked cars? Look, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't really matter that much if you indicate or not. I would say indicate if you're not sure. I would certainly say indicate um, if you're crossing the halfway line. I wouldn't bother indicating now if you're not crossing the halfway line, okay? And you're you're staying in your left lane, like so. It, it all depends on the situation. But if you're crossing the halfway line or the, or the halfway point and on the road, it's good to give at least a quick indicator, okay? So, so a lot of learners actually get a little bit too hung up on indicators, whereas there's far more bigger fish to fry when it comes to hazards like park cars, such as making sure you don't stop too close to the first park car, that you have a good hold back position, making sure that you judge the oncoming cars from a distance. Uh, that you judge the speed. So if they're flying up, um, and you're a bit slow taking off, you know you may you, you may have to give way to them because you know they they're going faster. They'll have right away. If the park cars are on your side, you have to give way. Um, things like this, moving out gradually, giving a few little sort of little glances to the left to make sure you're a door length. I have made a video on how to judge being a door length. Um, I think I have it linked in the in the description but if you want me to send you an email on that just just email me daintai at gmail.com and i'll send you on that video okay so hazards like i say it could be anything signals then uh so there's a few on signals here yeah i mean the change in lanes i think that was a dual carriageway remember we talked about that when he was joining the joining the dual carriageway tester said he didn't indicate you have to indicate if you're going from the slip lane into the dual carriageway for as long as possible until you're safely on the dual carriageway um there could have been another incident as well. Um, changing lanes, where he didn't, didn't indicate, or he might have indicated, but it might have went off. It might have switched off too soon. Signals moving off. Well, that again, I'm I'm presuming that's from a parked position. So he was parked on the left. It could have been after the reverse. It could have been just a hill start. Who knows? Where he didn't indicate properly moving off. I I again, I see this a lot with learners. They're probably so focused on the cars behind them. Or they're so focused on getting the bite and all that kind of stuff, they might not have the quite the right level of experience that they end up forgetting about the signals and then just moving off. And I do see that quite a lot, okay? Which is why I have the one, two, three rule. Because if you say that every time you move off, you should not forget the signal and you should not be losing marks on signals moving off. One, two, three. One gear, first gear. You have two indicators, indicate right, and you have three mirrors and a blind spot. Check that. And don't forget to refresh the blind spot if it takes you a bit longer. So next then, grade one on uh, misleading signals. So uh, no big deal. He might have left the indicator on a little bit too long. It might have been slightly misleading, but not in any way dangerously misleading. Progress, I think we talked about a little bit slow at the roundabout. I think, I think I mentioned it was because he wasn't looking. He had to stop when there was no need to stop. Whereas if, if he was looking and judging the cars, there would have been no need to stop. Progress turning right um, and at traffic lights. I think we dealt with those a little bit slow. As I said to you, a bit, little bit, maybe a little bit hesitant moving off. A little bit slow getting the bite maybe. Uh, I hope I hope he wasn't waiting in neutral all the time. Because if, you, if you're waiting in neutral all the time at the top of the queue, it's bad news, folks. Okay, An unwritten rule, wait in first gear Okay, for the most part. Because it means you're able to move off quicker. And it looks more efficient and it looks better for the tester because you know the tester wants to get a move on he has a schedule to keep as well so if you're waiting in first gear it's going to help you move off a little bit quicker moving on then um vehicle controls the accelerator just two grade ones there again no big deal he might have revved a little bit too much accelerated a bit too hard maybe maybe changing gears maybe moving off he didn't say or sometimes it could have been a lack of acceleration maybe i've seen that as well where People don't get enough acceleration when they're moving off, especially on a hill start, and the car could kind of struggle a little bit or chug or just get a few jerks. I don't know if you're not accelerating, it can be a little bit tricky moving off. 
Sometimes people coming from a diesel car into a petrol car might find that a bit tricky too because diesel cars practically move themselves off. Uh, I would never ever teach anyone how to drive in a diesel car because you know, I don't think you learn proper skills. I have a, always have a petrol car. So in petrol you always give it a bit of juice first and then bring up the clutch. It's good practice for hill starts, good practice for moving off at lights. Helps you avoid getting marks on progress at lights as we've seen here in this, in this, in this result. So... In relation to that last mark on accelerator, it, as I said, it, it could be to for over accelerating or maybe a lack of accelerating. And gears, well, we know the grade, the grade three there, he was in the wrong gear, taking a right turn and stalled. And the tester said he was in the wrong gear a few times. I think I mean, it could have been for too high a gear. Maybe the car was struggling. Maybe he forgot to take off the first. Could be a number of things. Two grade twos there, unfortunately. Road conditions, I think this was because he was going too slow um, entering the dual carriageway. He should have entered the dual carriageway at um around about 80 kilometers and he entered it at 50 which is way too slow but usually when you have speed and road conditions it's usually it's usually for driving too fast now so i'm not sure if the tester marked him on that there um but like if if you have a bad road and there's potholes and there's you know the surface is not great or there's loads of parked cars you know don't drive up at the speed limit then you have to kind of reduce your speed by about 10 or 15 kilometers then you know um it's like everything you have to judge the road as you see it um traffic controls then pedestrian crossing yeah i think we oh got a super chat there five euro thank you who uh how do i i don't know if i can see that i'll get down to it eventually but whoever gave me that five euro gar meal maga thank you very much um pedestrian cross yeah that was the the flashing light wasn't it he the, there was a flashing amber light it's, it's like the question i have up here um flashing amber light at traffic lights it's like a pelican crossing it's different to a zebra crossing the pelican crossing is where you press the button the pedestrian press the button a zebra crossing is flashing all the time, okay? So the light could be red, and then it will go flashing amber for a few seconds before it goes to green, and the flashing amber then means you can go as long as there's no pedestrians. You do not have to wait for the green light to come on. I think this fellow waited for the green light to come on. Uh, there was no need, and that's why he lost the mark there. And then reverse competent. I think he clipped the curb. No big deal. He didn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a serious mark. Scraped the curb. Clipped the curb. That's why he got the mark there on the reverse. So everything there. You can you can make a note of for yourself. Um, they're all very preventable. Some of them are kind of unfortunate mistakes. Some of them are maybe being a little bit lacking concentration. Some just lack of experience. Look, not everybody's going to pass the test. It's a journey for a lot of people. Sorry, let me rephrase that. It's a journey for everybody, you know. Uh, not everyone has got to pass first time. And even if you do, there's always another challenge up ahead. There's always another new road you can drive on, okay? So it's not the worst result. I think he learned a lot from it. And if he takes on board what I've been saying here to you, I'm sure he'll have a great, great chance the next time. Okay then, folks. Let me see there now if anything to get out of get done here. Um, so we've done the report sheet. Um, I've given my shout outs, um, the learner, yeah, I'm gonna, the learner asked me some questions in an email. So the learner asked me, then what about entering a dual carriageway? What's the story with observations and indicators? Do I need to check my blind spot, changing lanes or moving off or on the dual carriage, carriage sorry. Look, as with everything, it depends on the situation. The, the key thing when you're entering a dual carriageway is to build up your speed gradually but progressively, you do not want to be at 50 kilometers entering a dual carriageway, okay? It's too slow, um, it's, not, it's not in conjunction with the conditions that you have there, and you could end up causing other cars to slow down quickly behind you on the main dual carriageway, or swerve to overtake you. you, you trust me, you don't want that. Um, lots of mirror checks is usually fine when you're entering the dual carriageway. There is no essential need to get a blind spot check, and it's not really called a blind spot. It's more. It's more called like a like a sideway glance, like like this, just just like that. And when you're doing this, so when your head is here, okay, your eyes then will be kind of going like that, like the, the old snake eyes, you know. And you're look, you're looking to the rightmost part of your of your head. A quick sideway glance is no problem, okay. That should be absolutely no problem. But if you're checking your mirrors regularly and it's a fairly quiet entry to the dual carriageway, there should be no need for a blind spot then. If it's a little bit busier. It probably is no harm to get a quick quick sideway glance just to make sure it's okay. Make sure you're indicating. Lots of mirror checks. Quick sideway glance is fine. But like everything, you have to judge it based on what you have in front of you. So quiet, not many cars. It's different if it's busy, okay? 
Uh, in, as I said, indicators, you have to indicate whenever you're changing lanes or joining a dual carriageway or motorway or whatever. Um, and then switch the indicator off when you're successfully um, in the left lane of the dual carriageway. Um, yeah, so as I was saying as well, the, he asked about the slip lane. I said you, you should use the slip lane to the maximum or near the maximum, uh, and that will allow you then to build up a good speed. Rather than only using a little bit of the slip lane to get on and, and then suddenly join the dual carriageway, it's better to use the whole slip lane um, because it allows you time to build up a speed and build up as what I, what I like to call a safe speed. Um, yeah, there were just a few questions he asked me. Now, I have anything else here? I've covered the NCT thing, didn't I? Um, yep. But as I said at the start of the stream, there has been a lot of delays with NCT. The guards are taking a flexible approach. Um, you have to have an NCT disc to do your test. But check out the website. You might be able to avail of, a, of an extension if your car is able to. The, the, a lot of those extensions are coming to an end now, though, unfortunately. Um, yeah, okay. So let's get back to the comments then, folks. We'll be finishing up fairly soon. Um, let's see. <coughs> Apple's channel, my test is at the end of the month. Well, good luck to you, Apple's channel, in your test at the end of the month in Wicklow, I believe. So, best luck to you. Dermot Cooney, I live in chocolate cake. Thank you very much. Past first time yesterday, I had lost confidence. So, I took a break from lessons for a year and watched all your videos by a pint on me. Thanks so much. Well, I don't actually drink, but uh, I'll certainly uh, I'll do something with it. I'll, buy, I'll definitely buy a cup of tea or something anyway. So chocolate cake, I want to say uh, thank you very much for the super chat, for the support. Really appreciate your donation and well done. I'm glad I was able to help you and uh, congratulations on passing. So moving back to the rest of the comments then, folks. Um, let me see. I think it was Dermot, wasn't it? Was the last one there? Um, let me see now. Sorry, folks. I just, just refreshed her. So I'm just give me a few minutes there to get back. Um... Yeah, getting there now. I'm so going to get to the rest of these comments now before we finish up. Dermot Cooney, I think it was. Um, Hi, then. Do you have any info on getting a bike? No, no, I'll answer that. I don't, so, and just in case you, you didn't hear me, I, I don't have any info on bikes. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, you don't have to do a theory test if you've already done a theory test for a car, okay? But for any information on bikes, trucks, buses, you're better off asking a, an instructor for those categories, okay? Uh, let me see there, I need to go a bit further. Um, Dermot Cooney was in Amsterdam, sorry, I live in Amsterdam now, Dermot Cooney says, with a Dutch license, you automatically get a bike license, uh, 150cc, when you pass a car test. Oh, interesting. Would you know if I could automatically get a Dutch license, meaning I could drive a bike? Um, you live in Amsterdam with a Dutch license, on your but I'm not sure about that, Dermot Cooney. Um... Like, if it's a driving license, you'll be able to exchange that for a Dutch one, no problem. But you'll have to hand in your Irish license because you, you, you're not able to hold two licenses at the same time. Um, but for bike license, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be the... I wouldn't know. Um, but best wishes to you, Dermot. Peter Hannon, the anti -yes the estimator does work. Great, great. That's great, folks. it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on that. That's a great tool. I've, I've heard it's, it's useful for people. Uh, I heard the website is working very well, um, being able to pick your date and being able to check the how long your test is, how, how long the waiting list is, so good to hear that it's working well. Um, uh, Apple's channel, good to hear about quick retests, absolutely, it's a, great, it's a great feature to have quick retests, certainly is after six weeks, yeah, uh, but you have to apply first, uh, or sorry, reapply, I should say. I applied, uh, Peter Hannon, I applied on the 4th of July, estimators say test is 16th of October in Tala. July, August, September, October, that's a slightly long list, uh, but still, considering Dublin is probably not too bad. Um, you know, you, it's no harm having a bit of a run-in like that, give, give you time to get some practice in, give you time to get some lessons. Some test centres will be more busier than others. For example, the Dub Dublin is going to be busy. Nace is always seems to be busy in Nace. Uh, Galway as well. Um, whereas down in Wexford, it's not really that bad. It's, it's I like You can get a test pretty quick in Wexford, to be honest with you. Um, Lucia uh, Kravakova, thank you for the advice. You're very welcome, Lucia. It's my pleasure to make information freely available to all you folks out there so you can achieve your driving goals. 
uh, Ak- <coughs> Akil G. Hi, Dan. You're doing a fantastic job, buddy. Thank you very much. I follow all your videos. Help me grab my test perfectly with just three hours in total. Thanks, mate. You're very welcome, Akil, if I'm saying that correctly. Congratulations on passing your test. Just three, three marks. That sounds like you draw very, very well. And well done and congratulations. I'm honored and pleased to be a part of your journey. So thanks for the message. Um, Molder exit tester told you to break the light. Well, listen, I find that very, very strange, and I feel sorry for you if you had to do that because for a tester to tell you to keep going, to tell you to break the light is look, it's very weird, you know. Um, I'd be nearly, I'd, I'd nearly make a complaint about that, or I, I'd seek some clarification on it. Like, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say the tester was wrong. I don't have all the information, but it sounds like a peculiar enough incident there. Um, Harry T says, sorry, great tree. Uh, Harry's probably talking about a previous comment there, yeah, on, uh, about Marx, yeah. Randall, uh, uh, Kehindle, under what conditions can you get a grade tree in gears? Well, Randall, that is a good question. You could get a great, first of all, a grade tree is something that is serious. Uh, it's a mark that is dangerous or potentially dangerous. So, for example, if you're slowing down at a junction, okay, and you're going from fourth gear to third gear, but because you messed up the gear stick, instead of going from fourth gear to third gear, you actually end up going from fourth gear to first gear. If there's a car close behind you, your car is going to suddenly slow down and suddenly give a big heave and a big jump without any warning, without without any brake lights coming on to warn the car behind. So that would be a great tree. Um, if you take off in the wrong gear and you end up stalling in the middle of a junction like this fellow did and there could be oncoming cars that'll be a great tree um, if you go into I don't know if you go into first gear instead of reverse gear and you crash into the car in front of you that'll be a great a great tree so if you get the gears mixed up and you go into reverse gear for example but you're not actually in reverse you're in first by mistake and you're looking behind you but the car goes forward and hits the curb or hits the pedestrian there's a great tree it all they're just some examples it, it entirely depends on the situation um let me see uh james howard how do i work the handbrake well james you know you just basically pull it up and uh that's pretty much how it works you know you'll have the button handbrakes as well the, the they're called parking brakes or electric parking brakes whereas the, you just you just pull up the little there's a little ga- gap under the button and you just you just flick it up um you don't have to physically let those down. A lot of, a lot of people have, are actually pressing the button to let it down. You do not have to let those down, folks. If, if you have an automatic electric handbrake, just make sure you're in first gear or drive, whatever. Give it some juice, okay? Give her some juice. Bring up the clutch. If it still doesn't move off, give it some extra juice for good measure, and it'll move off then, okay? You don't have to physically let it down. James, for using the handbrake, you should use the handbrake on the hill. If you're parking or letting somebody out, um, let somebody off on the side of the street at traffic lights or if you're stopped a long time or if you're stopped on an uneven surface you should use the handbrake okay for safety um, Harry T wants to ask about grade 3 um, yeah well grade 3's are serious marks Harry T uh, dangerous or potentially dangerous did I answer that already um, look grade 3's can happen in a number of areas okay uh, this person got the grade 3 on gears so I think what happened was he cut out in the middle of a junction he could have taken off in second gear instead of first gear. Car wasn't able for it, um, and then he stalled. Okay. Um, okay, folks. I'm gonna try and fly down through these last few here. Um, EMT. Should you start to slow down if you're coming to a green light that's been green for a long time, so you don't break the red light? Yeah, it's no harm to do that. Yeah, absolutely. But not slow down to a crawl though. But you have to be very, very aware of a stale green light a stale green light is one that's been green for a long time and the junction is empty so i would certainly be let's say i wouldn't be accelerating unless you're uphill i mean you would i wouldn't be accelerating i'd have the foot over the brake but i would be saying to myself as well that when i get to a certain stage here i'm going to just keep going okay so let's say i might have a marker there there might be a sign or something there maybe maybe 10 meters from the lights and i'll say to myself if I can get to that marker or that sign or that wheelie bin that's there 10 or 12 meters before it, I'm just going for the juice pedal and I don't care because you have to be decisive. You cannot um, stop in the middle of a junction. You have to make a decisive decision there and then make the decision, stick to it, 
and then forget about it and move on because you can't beat yourself up over okay but when it gets to a certain point coming to light you just have to you have to realize okay i'm too far gone now i have to keep going Wojciech, i was wondering would you turn up today you're a bit late i must say Wojciech, double of you sure um good to have you have you here I know he's going to have a few questions here now, but I'm on the home straight here now, Wojciech, so feel free to email me if you've any if you've any questions as well. Uh, but you're very welcome along. Jean Dobre, Dobre VHR. Hafsa <coughs> Sultan. Just wanted to ask, is it okay for the instructor to yell at a driver? I completed uh, seven lessons and I'm losing confidence. If somebody, an instructor, so you mean like a driving school, uh, no, it's not okay for them to yell, but that's a reflection on them, not on you. If a driving instructor, a driving teacher is being sarcastic or is shouting at you or is losing patience with you, that means that he or she uh, is not able to articulate to you what it is that you should be doing. That means that they're frustrated and it's purely and utterly a reflection on them and not you. Okay, uh, It's not good. Uh, and you should make a complaint or you should change instructor if that's happening, okay? Al Afroza Sultana Misty, for roundabout, who have first priority? Who Who's going straight or who's going first left turn? The people who have prior, priority or right of way, Al Afroza, is traffic on the right and traffic already turning. It's not necessarily about who's going uh, for, first left or who's going straight. If you're coming to the roundabout, just because you might get there first does not mean you have the priority over the cars on the right. I would give the cars on the right about a 15 or 20 meter head start on you, if you know what I mean, because you have to give way to the right or anybody already on it. I'm not quite sure what you mean about who has first priority going left or going straight. Like Sometimes you have to give way more at a smaller roundabout because they're closer to you. And sometimes you have a bit more of an opportunity to go at the bigger roundabouts because they're further away from you. Okay, so it, it, it depends on the roundabout. Okay, you need you need to get more practice, more experience doing roundabouts. Lucia Kravakova, uh, I would like to see video of how to be careful on different roads and roundabouts when I meet big vehicles such as trucks. Indeed, I'm always quite nervous when they're around me when I'm driving. I know what you mean, yeah, and listen, the only answer to that is practice, driving lessons, and experience. That would take care of all that. Um, but I, I can certainly understand how it could be nervous meeting those vehicles. But I can promise you, the more practice you get on different types of roads, the better it's going to be in the long run. It's just a bit of a slow burner sometimes. So try to get practice on different roads. Don't drive the same roads all the time. You need some variety in your driving, okay? And you'll, you'll get there. Um, Dimitri Pintea. Hi, Dan. Could I ask you in relation to stage 3 ADI how much how much you need to help in phase 1 and 2? So, Dimitri, you're talking about driving instructor training. Um, so, stage 1 and stage 2. Stage 1 is like the theory. Stage 2 is the driving. And then straight, stage 3 is where you're testing on your communication skills. Um, you just send me an email, uh, Dimitri, you send me an email there, okay, daintai at gmail.com, I don't really want to get into that now, but if you want any help or advice, I'd be happy if you just email me on that, okay. Peter Hannon, I have uh, Walkinstown roundabout PTSD, oh, post-traumatic stress disorder, yeah, I have heard about this, well, I, I probably drove this years ago, um, but didn't put any pass on it, I do hope at some point to do a video on the Walkinstown roundabout, just like the Wilton roundabout as well. Um, so any info, any tips, any photos, anything you want to send me on that, folks, please do. Um, Dimitriou, many tau, I'm not sure what that means. Mulder X, I was on the news to fact, it was on the news to uh, fact Google the article. Yeah, that's probably about the, the stopping at the light, is it? <clears throat> or the, when the tester told you to keep going, yeah. Thanks for that, Mulder. Just before the actual driving part of the exam, sorry, this is Frostbite 337. Just before the actual driving part of the exam starts, is it any theory questions they can ask, or is it just road signs? In that case, they can ask you theory and road signs, okay? They could ask you three, four, five, maybe more questions, like what's the road with the yellow box? Don't stop on it unless you turn it right. What does a clear way mean? No stopping during the time shown, keep it clear. 
what does the amber light mean stop unless you're too far gone to stop safely what's the flashing amber light mean uh go as long as no pedestrians yeah they can ask you a theory and roll signs yes and later on they could ask you hand signals as well um is your mark is this your marking on someone else yeah this is my oh sorry you're that comment back there sorry um david Byrne. yeah this is somebody else who did a test david who emailed me in a few weeks ago and i'm just analyzing their report sheet this is not me this is uh their report sheet that they got from their tester a couple of weeks ago uh down in cork actually uh wilton lauren o'neill thanks for the tips then you're very welcome lauren it helped me pass last week congratulations lauren that's great news well done to you um david Byrne, are there no markings for parking yes there certainly are and that reminds me there as well david's comment reminds me that this report sheet here folks this is just the like this is not every single area that you can get marked on this is just the areas that he got marked on so this person here lost marks on rules position observation and so on but there's areas here that he didn't lose marks on for example, the turnabout is not mentioned. It's not turnabout is not listed here. So that means he did the turnabout absolutely fine. Um, well, it's not there. Right of way is not there. Okay, he, 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 I don't think it's right there. No, there's no right of way marks. This is not a full and complete list of every mistakes. This is just the mistakes that this person made. Every test sheet is different. Some test sheets will be smaller, will have less mistakes because the candidate only made those mistakes. He made these mistakes, and that's why they're listed. Everyone's going to be different. Um, Erwin, oh sorry, I missed one. Erwin, is it? Erwin Ga Gagarin, grade three. Yeah, grade three on gears. I dealt with that. He just stalled on a busy junction there, Erwin. That's why he lost the mark there. Then we have Chocolate Cake. Thank you again, Chocolate Cake. I really appreciate your support. MR10, passed first time yesterday. Only three grade twos. That sounds good. Appreciate the video. Super helpful. You're very welcome. We'll be recommending it to anybody learning to drive. Well, I appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And you too, MR10. Thanks for the comment. Nice to hear that. Peter Hannon, on holiday... Oh, sorry on holding feet still when you take off i've heard on some videos to hold up to four or five seconds seems like a long time if you want to change gears quickly up to second add yeah well that's a good 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 comment peter you see when i say hold for four or five seconds i'm kind of talking like for a beginner okay but if you're an experienced driver doing the test and you're a capable driver doing the test there's probably no need to hold it for four or five seconds maybe, maybe three seconds would be fine okay it can depend on the car it can depend on the situation but you know everybody's going to be different less experienced less confident people will probably have to hold it for longer but more confident people won't have to hold it for as long sometimes a car can be a factor too some cars might be more forgiving but it's a good comment peter look everyone is different you have to be flexible as well and you have to it, it depends on the situation um peter as well thanks for, you're very welcome peter and glad you're enjoying the videos uh thanks for the comment last few comments folks i'm going to, have to sign off for tonight okay um and Antoniette Ohana, if you're at a mini roundabout that has no left turn, only straight ahead and exit to the right, do you have to indicate left if you're going straight? Uh, since it's technically the first step. No, no, I would just in I would not indicate there and just indicate when you're halfway through because a lot of the time the indicator will switch off anyway as the wheel kind of turns and you're just putting extra work and effort on yourself. So Bit, again, there's a bit of discretion involved. That I'm sure the tester will be flexible if you do or don't. But I don't. I tell people, look, if you're going straight, don't indicate, and just indicate when you're halfway through, even if, whether it's an exit or no exit. There, David Byrne, are you able to reschedule a driving test? Yes, you should be able to do that, David, on the My Road Safety uh, portal. Um, you'll have to give them some notice though. Um, you have to give them at least ten working days notice, but. You, you, you can do that on the my road safety um online portal okay let me know how you get on with that will you because it'd be interesting to see paulina padlo would a tester give me a mark for crossing my hand on the stair possibly so yeah maybe it might be a minor mark but it, i have seen them given for crossing the hands you have to have control of the wheel by having it in the quarter to three position quarter to three means you have easy access to the controls and you're nicely spaced out from the airbag in case the airbag deploys god forbid well, yeah, it, I have seen them given for crossing hands. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a mark that you should get too often because most drivers should be, you know, after doing the test, should, should be able to steer properly without crossing hands. <coughs> Excuse me. Paula <coughs> Mendoza, do you need... <coughs> do you need to press the handbrake when pulling it? Uh, not really, but I, I would do it, though. I, I would press the button in all right, just in case the tester's a bit fussy. So I, 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 I press the button in, 
for the majority of your uplift of the handbrake and then then just let it go for the for the last last say click or two because I, I like when you when you can hear the click at the end it just reassures me that that is up so to answer your question it's good just to, it's good just to press the button in have no noise but then make sure you hear a few clicks at the end just to make sure it's fully up yeah uh, it should be a minor of mark anyway if, if it becomes an issue David Byrne, can I pay for the driving test now? I'm three months away from, from being six months on uh, learners. You could, but you have to be careful that you don't do the test before the six months. So I, I'm pretty sure you can pay for it now, David, yeah? Okay, you have to go on the My Road Safety to do that. Um, but they will ask you a question on that to make sure that you understand that your six months has to be, ha you have to be six months old, your permit does, okay? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, you can do that, yes. Um, Alex Kavanagh, can I book my test after doing my 12 lessons, but I want to pass the six months. You can book it, but you, you have to make sure the onus of responsibility is on you to make sure that your permit is six months old, okay? You should not um, chance around there and do that, because if you turn up for the test and the tester examines your permit and says, this, this is only five months old, you can't do it, you're going to lose your fee and you're going to have to go and reapply again, okay? So you can apply, yes. To the best of my knowledge, you can apply before your six months, but you can't actually do the test. So be careful with that. You don't want to be playing with fire on that one, okay? Last comment or two here, folks. Muteb, how would I know on a signal that the traffic lights can allow me to turn right or left? And some signals are additional lights, but they are not lit. Um, if it's a full green light, as in a circular light, you can go in any direction usually. If it's just an arrow pointing up, you can only go straight. Um, but remember, if it's a full circular green light, you can go straight or right or left, presumably. Uh, you, the, the other ones don't necessarily have to be lit. Um, sometimes they might be out of order. It just depends on the on the lights, you know. Um, John, though, you can only pay if you have... Oh, thank you for clarifying that, John. I wasn't really sure myself. Uh, apparently, you can only pay if you have the 12 lessons done because they have to be uploaded as well. Yeah, but previously, my mistake, previously you could apply... Uh, without having the 12 lessons done but thanks for clarifying that john though i appreciate that okay folks if you want to support me you can do so by revolut um links in the description similarly with paypal myroadsafety.ie for your driving test info and for applying um flashing amber light means you can go as long as there's no people crossing or about to cross um uh, that, that was the one reason that this person lost the mark and got one more comment there, Andy Gray. Hi, Dan. I was asked in my previous driving test who is allowed to stop traffic. Yes, and I hope you answered it correctly. So a Garda, um, person in charge of animals, uh, flagman, and what's the other one? Uh, school warden. Yeah, school warden. Okay, good question. Sometimes you could be asked that all right as well. Yeah, folks. I want to say a big thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the comments, questions, and updates on the My Road Safety um, app as well, online portal. I mean. Uh, I want to say the best look to you if you're learning to drive, the best look if you're doing a driving test. Don't forget to ask your driving instructor questions. It's only by asking questions is how you'll get more information, okay? Remember, they're paid to answer your questions, okay? If you have any questions for me, comment in any of my YouTube videos and I will get back to you. Or you can email me, danetai at gmail.com. D-A-N-E-T-Y-G-H-E -G -E at gmail.com. If you're learning... Best luck to you. If you've just passed your test, congratulations. If you've supported me, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate the support. And I'll be back very soon with another driving lesson video. So for now, it's goodbye and stay safe.